Hello everyone in CIS 115, Introduction to Programming and Logic. We are finishing up week 11 uh, in module 5 of the class. This uh, week we will be working with encryption and specifically we'll be uh, focusing on three different encryption algorithms the reverse cipher, the substitution cipher, and the Vigineer cipher. Something about encryption, it is one of the more interesting intersections of math and intrigue and mystery and secret agent stuff. It has all the things that uh, make for a good movie. So pretty much everything that we do with a computer depends on encryption. Right now I've got a connection to Blackboard and you can see it's prefixed with HTTPS. That is a form of encryption. All my traffic between my computer and the Blackboard server is encrypted and so um, it's using a public key encryption algorithm. We, uh, we have a lot of different uh, uses for encryption aside from just keeping your information uh, private I think the last time I looked there were 4 billion people on the internet. Um, what keeps those 4 billion people from seeing the traffic that I'm sending back and forth between my computer and Blackboard is, a, uh, is encryption. So uh, your password when you save a password on a Windows computer, it's actually saving something called a hash of that password. We've got a chapter on list, and in the list chapter of this class, we talk about uh, cryptocurrency as an implementation of a linked list. And in there, we will be using some hashes. So let's talk specifically about uh, what's going on with uh, encryption. And you need to remember last week we looked at the ASCII chart. And you remember I went to that website, uh, www.ASCIIchart.com There's the ASCII chart. So when we uh, when we type the letter capital A that letter is actually saved as a 65 in decimal base 10. So uh, here are a couple functions that we can use uh, to go back and forth between the letter and the number. So I'll start up a Tawny program here and we can play with the uh, play with the ORD and the CHR uh, functions that are built into uh, Python. So you can see how to convert from the letter to the number. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, save a file out here. And uh, let me just go ahead and put it on my flash drive. We'll create a folder for what we're doing 
in this lecture where we'll have all the files together. So. Encryption lecture looks like a good spot for it. And we'll call this test ORD and CHR. Okay, so we said um, that we could go from the, the letter to the number. So let's try that. Print. And um, let's go from the letter. So we'll use the ORD function in Python. And I'm going to pass the ORD a capital A. And let's see what prints out in the shell window down below. And you can see I got a 65, didn't I? If we go back and look at the ASCII chart, you can see that a capital A is a 65. Okay, so that function lets us convert the the letter into the uh, ordinal uh, number, the ASCII code. We could go the other direction, you see with the 65 there. To go in reverse, if I know that my code is a 65, my ASCII code is a 65, if I do a CHR function with a 65 in there, inside the parentheses, when I run that, I should get a capital A back, and I do. Now, I got my CISSP certification in information security a, a long time ago, uh, and I wanted to show you, uh, once you get into IT security, you find out how insecure so much stuff is. Um, that you become really paranoid and so I used to actually when I created a password on a computer I would actually use um, letters that didn't even exist on the keyboard so here I am on Windows and if I wanted to type a letter that's not on the keyboard okay uh, if you notice it, this ASCII chart, it stops at 127. There are lots of characters that are not on this chart that exist. And so I would actually use those for my password. So let's try something here. I've got Notepad open. I've got a Windows virtual machine running in VirtualBox on Linux. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key, ALT key, just to the left of the space bar. I'm going to hold that down, and on the numeric keypad, I'm going to type a 159 while I'm holding down the Alt key. So I've got the Alt key pressed, 159. And when I let up on the Alt key, look what I got. I got that character, which is a strange looking F that does not exist here. Okay, so you can actually type characters in that don't exist on the keyboard. Let's try another one here. I'll do an Alt 162. So I'm going to hold down Alt key 162. That's a uh, Looks like one of the characters that the Spanish folks uh, use in the uh, alphabet. Uh, and uh, let's try another one. Alt-179. That gets me the this uh, really tall vertical bar. Let's try an Alt-196. It gets me that. Let's try an Alt-202. That gets me that. So you can see, uh, you can keep typing letters on up to, I think, 255. Let's hold down the Alt key and 255. That's one that we can't even see. How about Alt 254? That gets us that. Okay. So 
you can uh, there are lots of letters that don't even exist uh, on the keyboard that are available to you if you know those codes okay and there's an extended chart where you can see the the actual characters for the codes uh, we can do the same thing in Python uh, if we go back here to Tani okay this was saying print that character so let's just try one uh, CHR 220 that's like I held down the alt key and type 220 and you can see it's a U with the two dots and on the top of it so uh, here's a 221 that gets me the Y with uh, looks like a little dot on top of it so uh, your exam is gonna ask may give you this character and ask you what the ASCII code for it is or it may give you uh, a 221 and say what is the character uh, for that uh, so you'll need to be able to use both the ORD and if I take that character right there and copy it let's see if I can get it copied control C and I'll come up here and I'll need to put a single quote around it okay so I copied that character and if I do an ORD on it then I can get the code back see so I've shown you how to take the the character and get the decimal ASCII code I've shown you how to take the ASCII code and get the character so uh, and remember this this is getting the ASCII code going the other direction it would be print CHR and then 221 and so we should get the same thing both ways there 221 and the Y okay so uh, that's on the exam make sure you understand that little tidbit uh, of how to to convert back and forth and let's talk more about encryption now let's do the uh, I'll stop in this video so that the videos don't get too long and also if you're wanting to understand just one of the uh, just one of the types of encryption each video will be specific to that type so the first type of encryption which is really not much encryption at all is a reverse cipher and so here's some material from a free book that is really a, a nice free book that Al Swiart uh, made available it's licensed under the Creative Commons license so you can go get a copy of that book uh, it's titled hacking secret ciphers with Python okay so um, this is the code and I, I've added some things to the book here uh, to show you how to implement it in Tani and also gave you the source code right here where you could download it but we can just take this code and copy it and paste it directly into Tani okay if I can clear out what I had there okay so let's talk about what this code's gonna do when we run it here's an input statement by now at this point in the class you know that when we do this it's gonna pop that little message up enter the text to encrypt or decrypt down here in our shell window and whenever whatever somebody types in to that down here it's going to take that and assign it to a variable named message now here we're creating an empty string variable called translated 
and it's empty because it's just got two quotes right up against each other. This, as you learned last week, um, working with uh, string methods, string methods, uh, there's a method called LEN that lets us get how long something is. So here we're capturing whatever they type in into this variable named message. Here we're going to figure out how long that is with this function LEN. We're going to subtract 1 from it because our string indexing, as you learned last week, string indexing, the first character in a string starts at 0. So while the length of something may be 10, the valid uh, indexes for that string would be 0 through 9. So that's why we're storing that uh, whatever the length is minus 1 here. Okay, That's going to be our starting point. So notice right here is some string indexing. This is going to grab right here. This is going to grab one character from that string that we captured here. It's going to grab one character from it. This is saying concatenate it, so it's going to scotch tape that one character to this translated string, which we said has nothing in it, right, the first time through. So this while loop, if you'll notice, it's bumping I down by one each time through the loop. So uh, each time, it's the number I is going to decrease by one each time. So as we roll through here, the effect of all this code is going to be to reverse whatever we type in. So let's run it. Okay, I'm going to type in A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, and watch what happens when it prints the reverse of that. What did it print? G, F, E, D, C, B, A. So that's a reverse cipher. It's really not much encryption at all. Most folks wouldn't consider that any kind of security um, because it has every letter that existed in the uh, original message in the cipher text. And that brings me to some terms that you need to know. And it talks about them here in the lecture. The plain text, and you'll need to understand that, the plain text is whatever is typed in the unencrypted message. So the plain text is whatever you typed in that a normal person could read and understand. The cipher text is the encoded message, the encoded or encrypted message. And encryption is also known as the art of secret writing, or cryptography is the art of secret writing. So uh, this down here is our cipher text. You can't look at it and tell what the message was. This is our plain text. That was the original message. Let's run this again and we'll do something with a real word like attack at dawn. Okay, when I hit enter, this is our cipher text right here. Our encrypted message, our cipher text. It says N-W-A-D-T-A and then K-C-A-T-T-A. -T -T you can look at it and tell that this is the reverse of dawn. This is the reverse of at. This is the reverse of attack. So, but this is the cipher text. This is the plain text. Make sure you understand the difference between those two things. Okay? 
So, uh, this just talks you through what I did in a little more detail. So, next we'll talk about a little bit more secure type of cipher called the Caesar cipher or the substitution cipher. But I will make a separate video for that. So, you know now you have a program after watching this, if you uh, go out there and download that program, you have this program. Your exam this week is going to give you secret messages, or it may give you a plain text message and ask you to encrypt it. It will tell you what type of cipher to use. So your exam for Module 5 will have some items on it where you're given a secret message and you have to decrypt it and paste it into a fill in the blank. So there's no multiple choice there for these secret messages. You have to be able to do this. You have to be able to encrypt and decrypt secret messages. Now, one last thing here. This, we said, was our ciphertext, our encrypted message. I'm going to copy that with a, con just hold down the control key and hit C to copy it. I copied it. If I run this again and I paste that in right there, that's my ciphertext. If I hit enter, you see what I get back out? It gave me my plain text. So, the reverse cipher program here will take in either the plain text or the cipher text and it's just going to give you the reverse of that right so you can use the same program with a reverse cipher to both both encrypt and decrypt the message okay good luck with that and uh we'll have another video uh, out here for the next uh, type of cipher.